Welcome to our first lesson on Adobe Animate, actually doing animation. So we've learned a lot over the last few weeks in learning how to kind of draw um, digital drawing. And now we're going to look at animation. We're going to start with stop frame animation and just draw a, a simple traffic light sequence. So what we're going to learn in this lesson then is we're going to look at how to use layers and the timeline. So we've already done a little introduction on layers, but now we're going to move on to the timeline. We're going to understand what the difference is between frames and keyframes. We're going to use some snapping and align tools. And then we're going to create this very simple color changing sequence. Finally, we're going to preview our work and then export it as a video. So let's begin. What I'm going to say to you guys for this is make sure we have a new folder. So if you go over to your documents um, and inside of your computing folder, I would like you to create the Adobe Animate Animation folder. Inside of this, you then need to create each lessons folder. So what tends to happen once you start animating is you tend to get lots and lots of different files and, and bits and bobs. So if you don't create a folder for each lesson, this will get messy very, very quickly. And then what you're going to do is you're going to save your Adobe Animate project into this new folder. So lesson one, traffic lights animation. So let's go and do this. I'll do a version two and I'll walk you through the steps. So same as always, let's use the HTML5 canvas option. And then we get our nice little screen. So once it loads, we have our one layer here. And we're just going to create um, a couple of layers for this project. Now, before we go any further, I just want to turn on some snapping options. So if you come up to the file option, I'm sorry, the view option, and then scroll down to where it says snapping, just make sure you've got all of these options on. You can snap to pixels if you want, but I don't tend to at, the, at this particular moment. The most important ones is that you snap a line, you snap to grid, and you snap to guides. And as we create the lights, this is going to be really, really important. Okay. So once you've gone to view, you've gone to snapping, and you've turned these options on, we're then going to start creating our kind of backdrop. So we can call this first layer something like um, traffic light sign or something like that or post. Okay. And then we can create it. So the tool I'm going to use to start off with is just going to be this normal rectangle tool. And I'm going to give it a rounded edge. So if we say something like 15 pixels for our rounded edges, and then we can draw it out. Now, because I've already done this, it's kind of already got some styling already, but let's just change this ever so slightly. So I want a blue border. So if I go to the, if I go to the black arrow tool and I go, uh, it hasn't even got one yet. So deselect this and let's just do that. Let's do that again. Let's make sure we can get a border on this one. So we'll come over to our rectangle tool. We'll set up just a blue border, very nice and simple. And then I want a dark gray. So almost as dark as we can do it. So once we've got that and we've got our 15 pixels of um, radius, we can make this up. So here we go. That should be about right. Let me just click on that. And we just move it over to the center. Now, look, I'm leaving the, the border behind. I don't want to do that. So let's just control um, Z to undo that. And then make sure that you select the border by either double clicking or loop selecting with the black arrow tool. And get it as close to the middle as possible. There we go. That looks okay. Now, we just want to create a post as well. So let's just grab this. And I don't want any border radius. So let's just turn that off. And I don't want an edge for this one, so I can just turn it off so it's got this line for it. And then the actual post itself is going to be a lighter gray. Um, and you can do your post whatever color you want, really. And we're just going to draw it out until we have our post. Now, it's not quite center, so I can just use the arrow tools just to nudge it over a little bit, and that makes it okay. So if you want to pause the video and do those, do those things so you've got this backdrop for our traffic lights, that'd be awesome. So the next thing we need to do is create the lights themselves. So we're going to do this on a new layer. So we have our traffic light post. And now we want to lock that layer because we've kind of finished with it. And now let's move on to the next one. So you'll notice that it chucks layer two on top. If it was at the bottom, it'd be no good to us. We wouldn't see the lights. So we're going to make sure that's on top. And we're just going to call it traffic lights. Okay, nice and simple. Now we're going to use the oval tool for this. Now we're going to need three lights that are exactly the same. 
So I'm just going to draw it out. I'm going to hold down shift at the same time, just so it constrains it, so it doesn't let me do things like this. So if you hold down shift at the same time, and that should be okay. Remember, we've got to fit three lights in. So we're going to do that. I'm going to leave it for now on this gray color. And I'm going to click it, and I'm going to move it over. Um, get it roughly where I want it. Now that looks almost identical, or almost center, so that's good. Now if I press with it selected, so you'll notice that it's kind of got these little dots on it. With it selected, let's press Control C and then Control V. And let's move this next one into place where I roughly want it. And then let's press Control V again. And let's move this third one into place. Now, if that didn't go into the right place, another thing you can do is you can hold down Shift and select all three. Now, over here, you have this align panel. panel and this allows you to do a few things. The first thing is to line to center. Um, mine actually went straight in, so it's absolutely fine. The next thing you can do is distribute so that you have the equal gap in the middle here. You can just distribute it however you want. So if I did that, and it did work, and it distributed it fine anyway, so I didn't really need to do that. But if for some reason it didn't, you can use the align tool. So you can just select them all using the control. So I'll do that one more time. If you select control and click, 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 and then come over to this button here then you have these options here center and then you can distribute it and you can also distribute it um, horizontal and vertical so it's really useful anyway we're done there so the next thing we need to do is look at the timeline so we've created our layers and they're absolutely fantastic we can lock this layer so we don't mess anything around now actually we're still working on it so don't lock that layer um, and we're going to move to frame 5 now what I'm going to do on frame 5 is I'm going to click and drag now, when I click and drag, you'll notice it creates a yellow, a yellow kind of color on both of our layers. And this is really important because if I didn't do that and I just insert on this top layer, what will happen? So if I insert a keyframe on this top layer, you'll notice it doesn't bring the background with it. So it's absolutely useless. Let's just undo that. Control Z to undo that. Let's do that again. So click, drag and to select it. Now, if I right click, and the option we want is this one here that says insert keyframe. Now what the keyframe does is it puts a little borderline here and that allows us to create a new part of our animation. So if I select this top frame now and let's just make this bottom one green. So we'll come over to our fill color and we'll just choose this normal green. And you'll notice when I move the playhead, which is this red line here, it will just turn it off and then it will turn it on which is absolutely fantastic so let's repeat this task several times so click on frame 10 and then drag and then right click and then insert frame now what we want to do is turn this green one back to the gray now there's a really cool trick for this if you select you have to deselect now by the way if when you create a new frame it has everything on that layer selected um, so in order to get rid of that selection you just click away from it and then you can select the bit you want. So now we'll come onto here. Now by default, as soon as we press this, we get this little pen dropper or this little ink dropper tool. And this allows us to choose any color we want. So obviously the color we want is this one here. So click on that, deselect. Now let's click on this middle one and we're gonna make that yellow. So click down, let's make that yellow, fantastic. So once we've got that, we can deselect again. Now come up to frame 15, um, click, drag so we've got both selected oops undo that we didn't want to do that control z fantastic so click drag so we've got them both selected right click and insert keyframe same thing again so click away from it first and then select the object you want to change the color of then use the ink dropper tool again or the eyedropper tool to select the color you want now let's select the top one and we're going to make this red and then deselect everything. So let's go through our animation. So we have our red, we have our yellow, we have our green, and then we have nothing. Um, if we left it like it is, the red would only last for one frame, which is really, really short. So let's bring it all the way to number 20. And then let's create another keyframe. And let's now turn that red to so deselect, and then select it, and let's turn it back to gray. So that final frame, will kind of rotate through and it will give us this equal pattern. Now, in order to test this, you can obviously just press the play button, which is absolutely fine. 
But another way, if you want to see what it looks like when it's finished, is you can press Control and then Enter. And what this will do is it will bring up a web browser. So just give it two seconds while it loads it. So here we go, there's our web browser. And the good thing about the web browser is it shows it on repeat, which is absolutely fantastic. And once you're happy with that, you can obviously just close these windows and then come back to animation. Now, the timeline will go over to this input tab. So in order to get it back to its original state, just click on the timeline button and it will come back to this, this one and we're all good. So you can pause the video at any point and just get that done. I just want to show you the final thing and that's how to export it as a video. So same as the exporting of an image, we just come up to file and then we come down to where it says export. And the option we're going to use is the one that says video, not movie, not animated GIF. It's this one here that's video. It's slightly more flexible than the movie and it's definitely more flexible than the animated GIF. So when we click on that, we get a few more options. Now, the option you want to make sure that you've got selected is this one here, convert video to Adobe Media Encoder. And this allows us to get the right codecs for kind of exporting it to YouTube and things like that. So it will give us a, a thing here. If you, if you don't get the right folder, you can click on browse and you can change it. And that's absolutely fine. So we're going to click export. Hopefully we get no warning messages. And that means it's going to go into the right folder. And you just need to wait just a few few seconds. And then it will bring up a new program called Adobe Media Encoder. Now this is a fantastic program and it allows us to convert any format we want. So this one listed in blue here is what it's going to convert for us and it tells us where it's going to put us so it's going to put it into our adobe animate project which is great um, it looks like it's going to put it in the wrong place and it's going to give it the wrong name so that's a problem because we haven't saved our workout oh mr cameron what are you doing let's just close this down again and let's do one i think it's really important because if i had exported it at that point and adobe animate crashed we would have been up a gum tree so let's go file and let's save our work now, now we've got it saved, let's make sure it goes into this right, the right folder. So traffic light animation, and let's just call it um, one dot traffic light. Oh, animation. Okay, so um, traffic light animation, oh my goodness. There we go, we got there in the end. Um, and this is going to create an FLA for us, which is great. And now we're saved and we're all good. Now we can go and export it. So let's do that again. So file, export, and then export video. Click on this and it will give us this option. Make sure we've got this convert video in Adobe Media Encoder and we press export. Then it's going to bring up Adobe Media Encoder in a few seconds time. Here we go. It does take a little bit of time to load. Now, <clears throat> we can get rid of this one. We don't need this one. So we should be able to delete that one and say, yep, because we only want to export one and this, this one here. Now, the export encoder that we're going to use is this one here, H.264, which is a general um, encoder that works really, really well for things like YouTube and pretty much anything. So if we're on a, a Mac system or a Windows system, this one's just, just going to work. It's, it's the one that I found um, gives me the least amount of problems. So make sure yours will probably come up with one of these other options. I use this one all the time. That's why it's there already. Um, but in order to select that, you just click on this drop down and then you select it there and it will change it here. And that's absolutely fine. It's going to put it in the right in the right folder now and it's going to give it the right name, which is brilliant. So let's press this green button here, this play button, and that will render it as a video. So we're going to click that. We're going to give it a couple of seconds and it's done. We can close this. Now let's head on over to our folder. So inside of our folder, if we click back, now it hasn't put it into the traffic light, which is absolutely fine. Um, but we notice that we've got all of these different things here. So the one that we want looks like it's going to be this one here, two megs. So when we click on it, we get a full rendered. And you can probably delete all of the other ones um, because we don't need them. So let's get rid of those, delete those, and let's put this in the actual, the correct folder. And then away you go. So now you have a fully animated traffic light system. Um, well done, and I'll see you in the next lesson.